attention to the signals and the signs, be willing to make the change mm -hmm. that is necessary. You could, diabetes is something that could be cured. You know, change your eating habits, change your, your exercise routine, you know, be willing to be the change that you that, want to see. So I love that, how you that's said that. that. Oh my, I mean, that's, that's, that's so important what you're saying. And I'm going to use the diabetes as an example simply because you brought it to the table. But again, yes, these even these diseases, right, before they turn into disease mm -hmm. or even when they become disease is a deficit that is attached to a spiritual issue. Yeah. That a spiritual distortion that has been unresolved because as above, so below. What does not get resolved in the spirit will precipitate into the body. As within, so without. Exactly. <laughs> so we know that that if you look at diabetic, and I mean, you might say it's cliche, but it's, it, it, it has been proven to be a spiritual truth. Diabetes, you know, mm -hmm. is, is an issue with insulin. There's two different ways that the insulin is addressed. And I'm not going to go into all of that right now, but I'm sure you all are already probably familiar or you can Google it. But um, this is literally the way a person on a deeper level is associating their uh the way that they interrelate with life they've lost the sweetness of life mm -hmm. in the spirit and so we have to go in and examine what is it where we disconnect that we don't feel that life is fun or enjoyable or we become you know almost like a prisoner to it and so it affects the different organs in our bodies and in this case the pancreas you know and so we so this is on an actual manifestation of disease, but this is what happens at every level of life. We see it in our relationships, we see it in our bodies, we see it, you know, in in our earth. We we see it in our housing structure. We don't take care of the things of our house. Our house starts to show symptoms that there's an issue. If you don't call attention to it, then it that thing can become things. worse. And that's what happens in relationships. A relationship doesn't just fail overnight. It does or, not. Or problems develop overnight. It never overnight. does. It's, it's always a process of stuff happening, but we don't take enough time to address it in the moment it comes, or we take for granted that the other person will be okay, or we don't need to help them with that, or we make ourselves busy mm -hmm. with other things. And so you're not tending to the issues that are arising. You're not paying attention to the signals mm -hmm. that are showing up to say something is wrong, mm -hmm. something needs fixing, something needs tending to. Right. And so then it eventually it spirals. Exactly. And I'm glad you brought up the point about the issues because that's the next thing within the conversation that needs to happen. We need to identify the issues. Yeah. You know, first we need to set the intention mm -hmm. of the conversation. And if your intention is to dissolve the, the, the relationship, you need to state that up front. The other person should be fully aware that that is your intention. But I do invite you, even if that's your intention, that you're open to what the moment will bring. Mm -hmm. Be open to God working, the universe, the higher intelligence, the, 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 your heart. Be, a, be open to something more sacred than what you can perceive in your mind mm -hmm. as creating an alchemy in, this, in the moment of your fullest intention to bring about healing and truth. And that may still look like a physical separation. However... In that separation, which is the whole point of this topic, is that at least you would separate in love. Right. And the next, the next thing we need to do is to identify the issues. Spoken, identified, and unspoken. <laughs> because we know that there's a lot of things that we don't necessarily oh, yeah. speak on. Even because there's so many other overt things that has, you know, just monopolized our, our mindset. And there's so much more to manage that we don't even deal with these other things. And you particularly see this in relationships where you have children uh, or people who have businesses together. Mm -hmm. Because there's so much going on with the kids that we have very little time to address the subtle mm -hmm. messages that we get when our relationship starts to break down. And the relationship many times lasts longer because we're so busy managing what we have to do as parents mm -hmm. that we're not taking the time to put the, the honor of priority into the relationship as well because the relationship is what is sustaining the fundamental premise of parenthood. Well, that's why you see so many uh, relationships severing and ending when the children leave home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because the, 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 the focal point to detract you from dealing with what was going on is now gone. So you're left with only 
the thing that you were trying to escape and it's time to face it now yeah. and so instead of facing it people just decide that they're going to end it you know but one of the things that i want to definitely bring up before we run out of time right is to encourage you not to end a relationship not to separate a relationship without first seeking spiritual counseling absolutely or psychological absolutely counseling, you know if you really feel like there's nothing else to do or you're at a point where you can't even have this type of conversation even with the timers and the peace thing yeah. it, it just it's just it's just not working yeah. you need to seek professional help whether that's spiritual through your church or some other kind of spiritual facilitator mm -hmm. or whether that's through a psychologist but definitely allow someone who an unbiased uh, intercessor to come in and truly facilitate mm -hmm. a conversation yeah. before you take that to the next level. You owe that to your relationship. You owe that if you have children to your children. You owe that to yourself in yeah. order to, to, to ensure that you are cleanly yeah. coming through this process in the best way possible. Because we may not always be able to to have a healthy state of mind and for whatever reason because we're at all different levels and you know have all these different experiences and luggage you know uh in our in our background and different levels of spiritual understanding it affects how we can or cannot move forward with a particular thing and if you're in that place it's nothing shameful about that you know um no. it, it's just another level of being able to access what you need it's something that would help, even if it's if, even if it all it does is brings everything together for you. Because one of the things that I use as a gauge for myself personally, and I see this in a lot of my counseling sessions and relationship counseling and marital counseling, is people will come in and they're determined that they're going to separate or they don't see how the relationship can go on, but they don't have a peace about that. Absolutely. They don't have a peace about ending the relationship. And so the cry is that I really don't want this relationship to end. I need help for you to show me how this can be fixed. But if Safely, you don't, yeah, peaceably. But if we don't step into right. welcoming that assistance, and that comes back to, especially within the uh, black culture, African-American black culture, we are conditioned to keep our business to ourselves. And you, one of the things that, uh, the saying that my family used to say was, um, Peter Bodie says, you talk some and you leave some, right? And so we're encouraged to keep a lot of things, but that's not helping us because we're in, we, we don't have the capacity or the, the wisdom to be able to deal with it on our own. Sometimes we're too close to it, so we can't deal with it. Sometimes you need somebody from the outside who can be very unbiased mm -hmm. and really give you advice from and counsel from a loving place mm -hmm. and, being, and being able to in interject and inject mm -hmm. that love energy into your Absolutely. situation, being able to give to you what you're not able to give to yourself or to each other in the moment, you know, and, and sometimes we need to talk. That's what Let's Rap is about, you know, sometimes we just need to talk about mm -hmm. it or, or, or have an outlet through it. Even if you hear this going on and you want to talk to yourself in the mirror, talk. We mm -hmm. encourage you to talk, you know. And just so that we don't completely uh, miss this before time is up, uh, but speaking on the relationships with the children and taking responsibility, mm -hmm. um, you know, with that. So first, as we acknowledge, you need to have a really, you need to, to get on one accord with your partner to go, get clear with yourselves so that you both can be responsible stewards and guides for your children. Yeah. You know, you were gifted with the opportunity to steward this young person's life, this young soul's life, to guide them and prepare them for their personal journeys. And we have to take that more seriously. We've gotten so caught up in the world and so caught up in our stories and so caught up with all of the fastness and the, and, and the saturated negativity and distractions of the world that we are not taking the responsibility to be true co-creators and be true stewards and leaders. Now, we've chosen unconsciously or consciously, to have these children. And then we're moseying on life through life, figuring it out as we go, which I mean we all do to a certain extent, but there's a difference between being consciously intentive yeah. in what we do than that should just them, kind of, Because yeah. you have to understand that you have a responsibility to these children. Mm -hmm. These children did not ask to come here. 
These children didn't ask to be a part of this mess. These children... Well, were, not in their conscious, right, not in their conscious right, 3D mind. Right. They don't have anything to do with the mess in right. most cases. Mm -hmm. And what happens with a lot of children, I, I find this in council, is that they take on the responsibility for the relationship ending. And a lot of times they feel like it was something to do with them, mm -hmm. that they caused it, mm -hmm. you know? And so now they go on, and this is something that happens as a child, which we talked about in, in our last program. Mm -hmm. And so they tend to take that on. And you either do one of two things as a child. You either go the exact same route or the exact opposite route based on how it affects you. So a lot of children are going through the same cycles that their parents are going through. Mm -hmm. Because whether consciously or unconsciously, they have chosen to step into that same path, but it came about through the influence of the experience Absolutely. that they had. Indeed. And you know, we have to choose to see our parenting roles as a gift. Mm -hmm. We have got to change our perceptual uh, premise in order to, you know, to, to fully facilitate a loving, energetic environment for our children and path for our children. Yeah, um, if we don't look at them as a gift, if we look at, if we look at them as getting on our nerves and causing us all this and causing us all that, and I know that it can be difficult, especially when they get to the teenage years and, you know, there's so many things going on, but we are being invited to walk in a higher paradigm, to to take on a higher principle, yeah. and when that when that happens, it's like pulling up your boots, yeah. putting on your big girl and your big boy. You draw know us. <laughs> I'll say it. Draw us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And 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 you know that's really what it all boils down to: us taking responsibility. And understand, you know, it's like you go into a minefield as a soldier, I saw when you were talking, and you step onto a bomb, you know, it, it just completely disjoints the body. And some people might lose a leg, some people might lose a leg and an arm, some people might lose a leg and an arm and part of the head, you know. But you have to see the family as, some, as, a, as a body. Mm -hmm. And when this thing comes in, it's like a bomb. And it totally disjoints everything and affects everyone. So if we can do it from a loving perspective, mm -hmm. then we minimize it to a degree. Of course, it's still going to have an effect, but the energy... We transmute the energies yeah. that are there. Exactly. We definitely create a more calm exactly. space. And, and an opportunity, you know, for light to be illuminated. First, we, you know, the first thing is cracking the shade or cracking the window. It may only be a little bit of light, but it is still light getting exactly. in. And then Absolutely. once that little bit comes in, it, it, it opens or creates a pathway for more and more and more. So you've got to take the first step. Yeah. You've got to set the intention and take the first step. And of course, we haven't addressed everything that you can do. Right. There are so many modalities that you can uh, utilize to facilitate health and, and a success and defining and, and, and finding a way out. And if you want some help, in moving forward, if you, this is where you are, feel free to get in contact with us. You mm -hmm. can reach us at letswrapmedia at gmail.com and we'll get back in, in touch with you. You know, if this has helped you to identify that you need some help where you are. We're encouraging you to reach out and we're letting you know that we're here. This is what we do, this is what we facilitate. And so, you know, this is what we intend to do with Let's Wrap. Be a, the, the little bit of light that comes into the situation mm -hmm. to help illuminate some stuff so that we can truly move forward in love. We can move forward in victory. It's, we don't need to be victims. We, we were not created to be victims. We were created to be victors. And so we have to learn sometimes how to move forward mm -hmm. in victory. Look at the basketball team. You got to go through training. You know, you got to learn the game. You got to practice the game. Mm -hmm. Then you got to play the game. Mm -hmm. And this is how you become better. You have to be committed. You Absolutely. have to be committed to any process. Absolutely. So. We want to thank you so much for joining us for this segment. We hope that it was encouraging. We hope that it was enlightening. We hope that it helped you in where you are. We invite you to follow us on Facebook at Let's Wrap Media. Um, follow us on Twitter, Let's Wrap Media. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and leave us comments and feedback. We love to hear from you. And we ask that you will join us again in our next segment. We're going to talk about how can we experience change without changing. <laughs> Looking forward to that one. I'm Danika. This is Nye. We send love, light, and blessings your way.
Namaste. Namaste.